Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long time speakers to test drive a new talk idea. If you'd like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Tessa Mero and she will be talking about what to learn first in PHP. Please make sure you visit joined in after the talk and leave Tessa some feedback. Tessa, go ahead. I want to thank you all for having me here. This is very exciting. This is actually my first time speaking um, on Nomad PHP. And as you know, I'll be doing a presentation on what to learn first in PHP. And I'll show you how to get started with PHP. And I'll let you know what you need to learn to extend your learning and offer you more great resources. I'm Tessa Merrow, as you know. I am a college instructor teaching web application development at a community college. I'm also an open source contributor for the last four years and it has been a big part of my life. Um, I'm on the production leadership team for the Juma project and my role is a dev evangelist for Juma. And previously I was, on the, I was a director on the board and for side work, I specialize in databases, so I'm doing a lot of Joomla database migrations. And as a hobby, I mentor several dozens of students, and turning students into future developers is a huge passion of mine. I live for that. So the first step of learning PHP is setting up a server. You'll want to set up a server with Apache. You can use a hosting server or a local development server. You can find a lot more information on easyphp.org. I've actually visited that site recently and it has a lot of great information to help you get started. The first thing you want to do is create a file in your web server directory. It should be either in your www or htdocs folder, depending on what development environment you set up you would save your test.php file within that folder. There's a lot of different options rather than WAMP and XAMPP, so it really depends on what you install. Type this exact code here and save the file. Remember, you are only working on test.php today. We're not going to use any other file names. And after you type in this code, refresh the page and see if anything is displayed. If you see information on the page, then your PHP is installed and you are ready to write some code. So how does the client, server, and PHP work together? The client, which is your computer, sends a request via the URL. The web server, hosting server, whatever you want to call it, interprets the PHP and sends it back to the client as HTML. The second step to learning PHP is to start writing it. Time to stop reading all those books and start writing some code because practice will make you a better programmer. Displaying text. You will need to use the opening and closing tag of PHP, which is demonstrated with a gray colored text. Type echo and a string, which is in the single quotes. To close the line of code, you use a semicolon. Use a text editor of your choice. A popular one is Notepad++, which is free to download. And that's what you'll use for a program for creating pages. Commenting text. Comments will not render as code and only has the purpose of documentation. These are the two most common ways of commenting code. The double slash is for one line comment, and the slash and asterisk is good for multiple lines of commenting. There is a third option, which isn't displayed here, is using a pound sign as another alternative for one line comment. And that was actually adopted from another programming language. Creating variables. If you use single quotes, your variable will not render. If you use double quotes, your variable will render. We have set the variable name to be Tessimero. The bottom screenshot is what the code will render to. See how easy that is? Variables and strings. You can use single or double quote strings. 
to put quoted words within quotes, you either use the other single or double quote, or you can use the double quote by putting a backslash in front of it. And integer or decimal number does not have quotes around it. Do this if you plan on plan to use this number for max. A string uses quotes, as you know already, and a Boolean uses a true or false type without the quote. Conditional if else statements. The basic syntax is if condition, then execute. If you can create multiple conditions by saying if condition, then execute, else if condition, then execute, else execute, if neither of those conditions meet. So it's all about understanding how the syntax works, and then you can kind of edit and play around from there. And there's tons of examples online. This is just a very basic one without anything executing. Conditional statement, the switch statement, which is another alternative. The switch statements allow you to select between different options for a value and run different pieces of code depending on what the case is. It's good to use switch statements when the variable can vary by a lot, but it's not really a popular thing to use. I always prefer to use if, else, if, then else. The default value on the very bottom runs if none of the statements will run, just like the else statement with the if, else. Here are the comparison operators. Um, make sure you look up the list of PHP comparison operators and be familiar with it. Also understand that one equal sign assigns a value, where two equal sign means exactly equal to. Arrays, loops, and string handling. I will go over simple arrays, associative arrays, and looping through them, and string types. So here's the four common PHP loops, which is built-in functions. The for loop loops through a block of code a specified number of times. The for each loop loops through a block of code for each element in an array. That one's my favorite one. The while loop loops through a block of code while a specified condition is true. The do while loop loops through a code once and then repeats the loop as long as a specified condition is true. I will be going over three, the first three of these. Four loops and while loop example. The while loop requires only one parameter which is a condition. The loop continues as long as the condition is evaluated as true. As soon as the condition is evaluated as false, the loop exits. As you can see from the two examples for a for loop and a while loop, the results that it executes are on the right side for both sections. Arrays allow you to store a list of information in one single variable. And you'll probably be using this a lot in PHP. Notice I used var dump to display information about the array. It's for debugging purposes. I'll go over how to display the array values later. Var dump displays structured information about variables, expressions including the type and value. Prints R displays information about a variable that's much cleaner, and it's um, written as print underscore R. So as you can see, I'm also creating the index of what that array is. And to access the first item in an array, you'd start with zero. One would be the second. So counting always starts at zero in programming. Looping through the array. Notice here, I use the for each function. Within the condition, I set characters as being the array of information. And I break it down to character, which would be the individual data in the array. When you loop through character, you will get each item as displayed at the bottom. Very easy. Here is an associative array, which is actually an ordered map. A map is a type that associates values to keys. The key can be an integer or a string, and the value can be anything. You use the for each loop to access the key and value data. On a side note, the period being used between the pre tag, which is HTML, and the var dump function is a concatenation and it helps to combine data together. 
and I use it to um, visually organize code as well. A function is a block of statements that can be used repeatedly in a program. It will not execute on page load and only executed when you call a function. And you can just create function in any name and then a parentheses with the brackets and you'll be able to um, create your own function. Okay, that's enough. The next step of learning PHP is extending your knowledge after learning the basics. Extend your learning by reading about object-oriented programming, which is OOP for short. Understand the model view controller structure, which is called MVC. Learn at least one PHP framework, like Laravel, which is one of the easiest to learn and voted 2014's most popular PHP framework. Be familiar with the php.ini file in your server because it'll save you so much time in the future. Review lots of cool built-in functions, especially with arrays. Also, check out the PHP date function. There's a whole documentation about date functions, and it's my favorite, and it's a lot of fun to play around with, except the time zone part. Practice debugging and look into using error reporting. That's pretty important to be able to fix broken code. And one more thing I forgot to add on this list is learn how to access data from a database. Learn how to connect to your database and pull values. That's the greatest thing about PHP. Some awesome resources. Read books that are you know, made, uh, written by people from the PHP community and, and help support them. Watch and read tutorials. They're everywhere online. Also, learn how to use an IDE, which is an integrated development environment, and it makes debugging much easier. And the most popular one is PHP Storm, which is a commercial project. project. And a, there's also Eclipse, which is free. So you can also go to Interactive PHP Learning, learn-php.org. And instead of setting up a server, you can play around and test code right on their um, homepage. And if you want to learn PHP in a really fun way, try visiting codecademy.com and look up their PHP courses. I always have my students in my PHP class go through these courses, and they always pick up much faster, especially when you're gaining levels and, and earning points. And one important thing is to check out the PHP documentation. There is so much provided there. And if there's something missing, you can add to it. One more thing, last but not least, reach beyond your goals. You can find a PHP mentor to give you advice or direction or simply become a mentor. I know I became a mentor after contributing to the Joomla project. After a couple months of learning what it is, I started helping people that are below my skill level, which was basically just learning how to install the software. So with PHP Mentors, you can find it at phpmentoring.org. You can contribute to the PHP community or other PHP-related projects like Joomla. To get involved with PHP, you go to php.net slash get-involved.php for more information. Without contributors, none of this would exist at all. You have come this far in learning. There's no going back now. I actually wanted to create my own little quote. <laughs> and you can find me at Twitter, Tessa Merrill, and my personal website, tessamerrill.com. Thank you very much. That's it.
Thanks, Tessa. We have one question. Uh, TW2113 in IRC wants to know, what are, your, what are some of your favorite libraries, if any? I actually spend a lot of time building applications within Joomla. So everything I build is Joomla websites. I don't actually build sites outside of Joomla. All right, awesome. Uh, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit joined in and leave.